Hello and welcome back inside the Park for May for podcast number 873. This is Todd. No, Todd, not now. He's from Missouri, where they're all known to be killers of innocent men, women, and children. Yeah, what are you going to do? You know why I've asked you here. You must convince the villagers that I'm harmless. That's exactly what I need you to do tonight for your kind consideration. I am back. We're going to cover some Formula One news. But of course, before I cover Formula One news, I have to introduce my guest. You know what that means. I have to go all the way to the right coast of our nation's capital, nestled in the loving embrace of our nation's capital, right there in, you know, in Maryland. Sorry, Ravens. And, you know, you got to love her. You love her. You know who it is, the lovely, the redoubtable. Grace! Grace, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, Todd. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Doing well. You sound like you're a little under the weather, Grace, but I I appreciate your soldiering on. You got to play hurt. Yeah, I mean it's I'm I'm fine. It's just I'm pretty sure one of the small under the age of 5 snot machines that I was hanging out with all weekend in my family <laughs> probably gave me something. That yeah, that happens. Cuz they're super happens. cute, super fun and super germy. Yeah, I was, I, you know, when, when we first got on the call here, I was convinced that you and your husband were yelling and screaming at the Ravens, uh, oh. losing to the Chiefs, and you were, you know, apoplectic about it, but this is a much better reason. Yeah, I mean, I mean, both those games deserve some amount of yelling, I think. Whatever did, team you were they? for, there was a lot, there was a lot going on there, but, um, yeah. no. Uh, uh, well, Flip's a Ravens fan, right? That is correct. Yeah, yes. okay, yeah. And... And I was, I was hoping it would be uh, Detroit winning, and then we can make it all small market Midwest Super Bowl, which the big networks hate, hate it. Well, when it's I al- small market Midwest. I also liked it being, uh, you know, cats and birds. <laughs> yeah, right. right, cats and birds is always a good combination. Now, like now it. it's just the the battle of fonts. Like, well, that's no not very fun, right? Like, cats and birds was more fun. And I, you know, speaking of that, my daughter and I were going back and forth watching the Ravens game. At first, we thought we liked it, but then we're pretty convinced that the the font they use for the numbers on the jersey, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> it doesn't match the name font, you know. Oh, it doesn't. That's true. But yeah, it's a, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Who's... I watch I watch basketball, so there's like a whole myriad of like what? Yeah. yeah. What? yeah what? So yeah, yeah. I see these colors, and now they read. You know, when they did the um. In the mid-season tournament, like everybody repainted their floor. Like, calm down, people. There's too much going on here, and I don't yeah. know. Like, it's too much. I'm too uh, distracted now. Well, having suffered through decades as a suffering Chiefs fan, I'm I'm elated. Yeah. But uh, uh, but my friend Robin and Dan, they're going to be out in Vegas. They're big 49ers oh. fans. They're going to be. They'll have all kinds of haterade for me, Grace. Well, you know, so it's not going to be. Not it's part of the good. fun. It is part of the fun. I mean, I'm I'm so I'm clearly been in the like I'm just here for Usher, you know, like <laughs> I hope Usher wins, you know, like that's all I got. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, that's exciting. Hey, also Grace, you'll be happy to know I did catch up on the season finale of Hell's Kitchen. I haven't watched yet. <laughs> oh, you haven't watched it? Oh, I can't say anything then. I know. Well, oh, I, I don't know. The long off-season saga. Our TiVo died, which then means we can only watch things on streaming. And I was like, uh, oh, I just have been too lazy to like figure out if we have access to the Fox app. And, of course, everything's under Flip's name. So it's like if I go to watch it and he's not – I'm like, yeah. I don't know when I watch it. It's easier when we just had the, the TiVo, right? It's just like a deep yeah. I'm like, oh, there it is. I'm four episodes behind. I'll just sit here and watch them. But, oh, boy. So I am behind by like what two two episodes three episodes? Oh wow! You so are they behind. so they did the season finale. Yeah, oh. two episode uh, d- oh. double header. Yeah, man, everybody's like, "Is this an F one podcast? We're talking about football. It's the off season. Hell's people. Kitchen. I know. I don't know. I'll get caught up. I'll get caught up for next week. I promise. I know. I'll everybody's like, "Get to the show. This is, this the, is show. the show. Man. Well, I have to get caught up because now." What last last chef standing or whatever uh, Gordon Ramsay's other show next is. next level yeah, yeah next level chef that's it premiered yeah. last night since Fox doesn't have the Super Bowl so now I'm like right. I'm I hate it. it's it and I am I already haven't watched the uh, WRC race I'm like I hate this part like I just start like all the like I'm behind just sort of like snowballs but yeah um, yeah, yeah I'm behind oh see mm. there you go. 
Womp womp. Well, you won't believe how this one ends. Oh, all right. Now, now, yeah. who needs work? Whatever. <clears throat> yeah, right. Right. They won't right. know I'm just like gone for three hours. That's right. That's right. Uh, so I've switched. Uh, now I've watched the first two episodes of Masters of the Air. Oh, I haven't watched that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Should we I don't know. I got one? nothing. Sure. Yeah, no, yeah. I wouldn't expect you to if you haven't seen it. No. How um, would you know? No, but I'm sure, you know, I'll add it to the list of yet another yeah. show I can be behind on. Perfect. It's good. Perfect. I'm good it's good. That. It's good. It's good. Let's talk some Formula One, shall we? Sure. That's typically what we do on this I podcast. blame Formula One, actually. I blame Formula One. Bit I of a vacuum. MotoGP. I t- too many races. I feel like I say this every week. Yeah. But I can't. I can't. I can't live this life and watch other things and other sports and pay attention. I know. Too many races. I know. It's I don't even go races. anywhere. I just stay in my house and it feels like too much. Even if we did and were heavily invested in NASCAR, we wouldn't have time to watch it. Well, no. No. You know? I already have like seven yeah. sports leagues I'm watching. I know. I get I get that, you know, Formula One and then you try to squeeze in Moto G P. You know, I'd love to I'd love to get the WRC app and watch WRC. It's just on time. Well, you have to watch it on the Red Bull app. Yeah, there you go. They don't have their own app, which is how I always find out about these random Red Bull sports that I share with people because I'm like, oh, is the rally, like the last month, I'm like, is it Monaco yet? Is it Monaco yet? Is it Monaco yet? No. Okay, what is this? Soapbox racing. I'll watch that. <laughs> yeah, right. Ooh, soapbox racing. I'm all over it. Yeah. I think Crazy like mountain bike people. Won, won Monaco this past weekend. Right? Oh, there you go. Speaking of winning races, it's a tough race. The racing season officially got underway here in the United States of America with the Rolex 24 from Daytona with our very own Paul, the international Charlesley, as the sporting manager for the Heart of Racing Aston Martin number uh, 23 and number 27 cars, GTD Pro and GTD. Oh, tough weekend for Paul. Very tough weekend. They they hung in there. They persevered. They managed to claw their way back to fourth place in GTD Pro. So congratulations on them, and a big congratulations to the captain, the class act that is Roger Penske and Tim Sendrick for Penske winning, which is awesome. I'm excited yes. about that. Porsche coming back from decades of not winning. They're great to see Porsche. Great to see that mark back on top. Um, and great to see Penske doing well. And if for any other reason, because here in the States on the NBC, and it's not NBC's fault. It's just that the series is so heavily sponsored and supported by General Motors and Cadillac and, and all of that and Corvette. <laughs> That the entire show turns into like one long mm. General Motors commercial, you know, little featurettes good, they do on the Corvette times. and the new Corvette. You know, talk about the new hybrid Porsche. Let's talk about that. No, we're going to talk about the Cadillac. Oh, okay. Talk well, about the new Ford GT Mustangs. You know, no, we're going to talk about the Corvette. No. We have it's, no uh, we have no Corvette complaints in this house. Those commercials are fine. Oh, yeah, it's a cor- new Corvette's a cool car, don't get me wrong, but you know, it, you can only take so much when it's in a, when it's I mean, you, they had that so far rammed up our backside you could taste it. You need a little uh, flex seal to break it up the monotony for you. Yeah, it is. A little mother's polish every now and again. Yeah, a little mother's polish brought to you by Mother's right. brought to you by Mother's Polish. So, uh, so there's that. Um, so sorry about that, but you know, Paul won that race last year, yep. fourth place this year. Not all is lost, you know. It's okay. P four, decent start to the season. Could have been worse given the issues that they had. Just a little uh, shout out to the entire team, the perseverance, nay, Grace, the stick tuitiveness. <laughs> There you go. I mean, I think <laughs> that is how I would describe Paul. It is how I, he's an awful, he's a sticky kind of guy. Yes. You know? Yeah. So, um, and, and he was gracious enough to text me when I was bugging him. He's on the pit wall <laughs> trying to manage strategy. And I'm like, trying to do his job. You like the tires? <laughs> Shut tried, up, man. Have you tried the hot dogs in the cafeteria? He's like, oh, 
dude, I'm trying to salvage a race here. And you're, you're like, hey, the yeah. Porsche is a pretty color red. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I mean, uh, he could also just mute everybody, which also would have solved He could, but he's trying, to, you know, he's trying to be gracious with me. He's trying oh, to be my friend, you know. I, you know, I pay him well to be my friend, and so yeah. <laughs> I expect him to answer when I text That would have been great. See, right now I'm in the middle of this thing called a race, and I'm pretty sure you're <laughs> watching it, so could you stop texting Yeah, me? I know. I know. Yeah. And then I get delusions of grandeur like I'm actually helping him, like when I'm watching a close-up of a pit stop and I see a bobbled something here yeah. or I see something going on. I say, ooh, ooh, the Lambo looks like the, the rear you know, diffuser is broken, man. And he's like... <laughs> As if the team didn't have anybody watching any of that, you know. They have their own Ann Davidson watching the yeah, feed. Yeah, they do. You know, but I, and, and they're all I over like it. This. And here I am with delusions of grandeur, thinking I'm like Paul's fifth pit crew guy. You know, it's terrible. They should add you to the team. You can be like a long distance spotter or something. They should just you know, <laughs> right. bring you on. Right. Right. Right, exactly. Well, I'd be well, telling him how the L and P's are doing, and he's like, "I don't give a damn." I don't about the care. Right. Yeah. <laughs> out of my way. That's great. That's great. That's not my class. Not Thanks. my class, man. <laughs> yeah, he's a patient man, that Paul. To put yeah, up with me. Sure Let's talk about some Formula One news. Big news this week, folks, regarding Lando and Leclerc. Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc have inked new multi-year contract extensions with rumors that both deals should see them through the 2026 season. They didn't officially say that from the teams, but that is the rumors. Um, the inevitable questions that always come with any contract deal is that you get people saying, okay, well, hey, they could drive to the new deal. Have they made the right choice? So there's a lot of, you know, you know, chin stroking and and uh, hand wringing over whether they made the right choice. One could argue that Leclerc and Lando are at teams not fighting for wins, but as there's no really not a lot of room at Red Bull or Mercedes, what were their options? Right. That's always the case, right? Like there's yep. only there's only ten teams. Yeah, it's like musical chairs. So the one thing I've learned about F1 after watching all these years is it's actually true. Uh, in our own lives as well, is that it all comes down to timing, you know? Oh, it's yeah, It's just absolutely. about timing. And yeah. and that's not just a racing thing. That's everything. I, you know, my, my life's been, you know, uh, a meteoric rise to mediocrity because I keep missing timing, you know? I didn't I read mean, this right. I didn't take advantage of that when I should have. And then I was a jerk and turned that down, not knowing that would have been the real claim to fame. Uh, but anyway, that's the story of my life. Lessons learned. But given that old axiom. You said, so we should just call you Daniel Ricciardo from now on then? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I've led my life like a Daniel Ric Ricciardo episode. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, making the wrong move at the wrong time and then staying uh -huh. too long when I should have moved, zigging when I should have zagged. I take that zagged. back. I think you're actually Fernando Alonso, and <laughs> you you're just be. waiting for your moment. You're waiting for your Aston Martin. I'm, I'm looking for my Lawrence Stroll right there now. There you go. All right? There you go. So call me, Larry. We're going to finish you out on an upswing. There you go. Yep. Uh, so given that old axiom, then it would be uh, a dull of us to not consider that the driver management companies that manage these drivers, they are trying to align nice. their contracts with the most flexibility in the line, their contracts with the top teams and their contracts. It's all a game of chess, right? And they right. want, you know, their drivers to be available when the dominant teams might be going through renewals as well. They don't want to lock them out or they at least want exit clauses in their contracts that they could get out, right? Yeah. Uh, it's all part of it. Keeping yourself available for the top teams, I should think, is paramount for any management company. Yeah, I mean, I think you're seeing it now both in Formula One where we've had no driver movement and in MotoGP where everybody's moved. Everybody, yeah, right. Right, right. because uh, Morbidelli's right. the only one that's on an off-season, you know, is on an off-cycle contract. So it's like now that's exactly what happens because it's great if you're, you know, if George's contract is up but nobody else has any space, well, then I guess I have to sign again with Mercedes or something like that. So right. you're right. There has to right. be a place to go and it has to be, you know, like a swap. I mean, I, I think that, like, um, they make it sound, like Zach Brown makes it sound like, well, when Carlos said he wanted to go to Ferrari, 
we just picked up Ricky Arno, no problem, right? Like there was like the seamless thing. I'm sure it was yeah. not that seamless. There was a lot yeah. of nights and phone calls or sending faxes or whatever they do yeah. to, to make that kind of look that way and to just like one was leaving and one was coming in. Yeah, you know, and, and, it, and apart from timing, obviously there's more to that. Um, there's, I mean, you know, good grief. That's just one aspect. You have to also consider the work environment they're in, the driver's personality, the team's right. personality, a host of other, other factors, least of which is money. Right. It right, all sure. plays a part in these programs and the driver management teams are supposed to be taking all of that into account. Right. Right. Um, so, you know, let's be honest, a three to four year deal at Ferrari for 20 million dollars or rumored 23 million dollars a year, even if they aren't winning titles, that's a pretty good living not, for Charles. Not too bad. Right? Not and bad. and while you want to win titles, I'm sure Charles does. Living on twenty million a year ain't half bad either, right? Right. Um. So you got to wonder. You know, they always all every driver on that grid is there to, because they ultimately, at the end of the day, they've worked their tail off since they were five years old. They want to win a world championship. Every single one of them do, but not every single one of them will. And right. the reality of that is, this is their job, right? And so because it's their job, this is what they're going to try to maximize on. So whether Ferrari's winning or not, Charles getting a four-year deal of $20 million with an, or $23 million a year with an escape clause is a pretty good deal, right? Right. You could argue that Lando should have gone uh, for Carlos' seat at Ferrari because he has not been extended yet, or that maybe he should have waited for Mercedes or even tried to dislodge Checo from Red Bull. But those options are always difficult to manage when it's the choice, in, when the choice is in the hands of the other teams, not right. completely yours. Right. And the best you can do is to have your camp fish around to other teams just testing waters, right? Yeah. And I'm sure that happened. Um, you know, we heard rumors uh, before Lewis had re inked his deal that, you know, there was some conversations being had up and down the paddock. Now, that's yeah. rumors, but that's uh, that's what we hear. So it's a complex. You're just scooting web. around. Yeah, oh, yeah. You're scooting. just scooting around, you know. Woo. Um, so and as I mentioned, Carlos Sainz remains unsigned or unextended by this uh, by this time uh, recording the podcast. But you know, it'll it'll happen the so day tomorrow. after we record. Yeah, right. Always. Um, uh, but chances are he will get a deal with Ferrari. Yeah. And to be honest. Would Lando like that option, to be honest with you? I'm not sure he would. When yep. you consider Alonzo, Vettel, and even Leclerc all have found the Italian team on the back foot. Right? I don't know why you would leave McLaren for that. Right. That's what I'm asking. You know, you know you what I mean? Do you really I think Lando would leave the trajectory he's had on increasing more and more points every year and the trajectory that McLaren seems to be showing? Yeah. Do you feel that he would even find that Ferrari potential enticing over McLaren to start over. No, yeah. it's like moving. I hate moving, right? Nobody right. wants to like have to build furniture and figure like, no, never. So you always want to live with the option you have as long as you can before you move somewhere else, because yeah. you would be starting from scratch with this team. And I think especially in formula one where there's, I mean, no, no, team is ever just like the quarterback or the point guard right like it's the whole team but especially in racing man there's so many personalities especially at ferrari is such a different environment than mclaren i can't yep. i don't know why unless like carlos Sainz, you had always dreamed of or you know vettel or something like that you know that you'd always wanted to be at ferrari that yep. would be a very that might be a motivator but lando's never been like i, I had you know michael schumacher's poster on my wall i always wanted to be at ferrari so why would you go to ferrari because your chances of winning a championship with Ferrari is is clearly not a done deal. And like you said, like McLaren at least is kind of like going to get close to that. He may never win one with McLaren either. Right. But I I wouldn't make that switch. It's just not worth it. It's not, not so either. a done you'd, deal. You'd be coming in, Charles is the guy, right? Yeah. You've got that element to deal with. Whereas right now, arguably, no offense to Oscar fans, but mm -mm. Lando's kind of the guy. It might change. I mean, it right? It change. It's... You don't know. That's right. Um, I would say if anybody's got a chance of knocking Lando's feet off, Oscar's Oscar. doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, you know, for Charles, 
if it's not Red Bull, I'm not sure what other option would have been better for a potential win other than Mercedes, and there's no room there. So yeah. there's a part of me that wonders, though, if Carlos might not be interested in replacing Checo. I want Carlos to come back to McLaren. <laughs> That's you got dream. a full house there, though. It's fine. You you want Oscar out, Carlos in, just for you a want moment. Carlando. Yes. I mean, what I really want is Carlos and Fernando at a team, but that yes. seems not likely to happen. But that's the actual dream. It like should. Maybe they should get rid of Lance Stroll, bring on yep. Carlos, and have Alonso and Carlos. That's See, what I really they're, want. They're missing it. They're totally missing that's it. That's the dream. I, I, I think I even had a tweet or Instagram post where I had a picture of both of them standing there, and I said, <gasps> if Lawrence was on top of his marketing game, he would have his give his son a job somewhere else in the company, yeah. and he'd bring Carlos in, and they would they would go to market as the Spanish Armada, you know. Absolutely, and, you know, and, and then you'd have like you know Alonzo, the like you know grizzled veteran, and yeah, you know, yeah, and then Carlos, Carlos would be the, the plucky pair. upstart. Yeah, although I guess yeah. that's Alonzo, right? Young driver Alonzo. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think that I think that would be that would be great. That's what I would really want if I could like, you know, just make I'd teams. Make, however, I'd I make them. that choice in a heartbeat over yeah. Lance. Sorry, Lance. I'm no offense, but if you could get Carlos, yeah, I mean, just marketing appeal alone and merch and stuff. Yeah, would those be two awesome. are like hanging out together yeah. and yeah, yeah, eating snacks, great. doing all those unbox videos together. It would be great. I'd love it. <laughs> right, right, right. So I yeah, I think I think they ended up. Charles ended up. I think where legitimately yeah. it's best for him, timing wise. I think Lando did. You know, this is coming from a guy who's missed timing his whole life. But I think, I think that that's, I think that's a, you know the logical choice for both of them. It's interesting though, Grace, um, when Lando was asked about, well, you know, he really did the deal with McLaren, and uh, why didn't you think about Red Bull? Uh, you know, Checo's. You know, seat is tenuous, right? And so they asked him about that, and uh, and here's what he had to say. And this created some uh, a big dust up in social media and people a commenting a kerfuffle, if you will. A kerfuffle. Yes, in social media, a uh, a lot of quibble on social media about this. Um, here's what he said, quote, I think it's a longer discussion than just saying that he was scared. Um, is Max one of the best drivers ever in Formula One? Absolutely. I think he's proved that enough. He's in a team which he's very comfortable in. A lot of things are built around him. So for anyone, even the Max of a few years ago, to go in against Max of now is extremely difficult. So I don't think it's a question of are you scared or not scared. I don't think I'd ever be scared of going up against anyone. But even if you enter a team... You Are you in a position to challenge someone straight away? And are you comfortable to do that? And I think it's a no for any driver. It takes time to adapt. It takes time to get into place. And if you want to go against the best driver in the world, it's not the best thing to do. It's not a smart move to do. But I would love to race. But I would love to race against Max. I've enjoyed some of our battles that we've had, and I'm looking for even more uh, forward to the battles that we're going to have this year. End quote. Now, yeah. seems pretty straightforward to me. I right? think the whole quote seems more straightforward, but what gets carried is a much shorter quote, which makes him just sound like uh, he doesn't have the dog, if you will. Right? Like yeah. He's not. He's not cut out to be a Formula One driver. Right. But the whole, if you read the whole like paragraph like you just read, it, in context, it makes a lot more sense. Imagine that. Yeah, that's why I wanted to read it because, I, uh, you know, Max admits he's not as good as Max or, you know. Yeah. A lot of these paraphrasing and, and taken out of context uh, for clickbait, uh, understandably, but, well, not understandably, but sadly. Yes. Um there's all this hand wringing over his comments that he's admitting he's not as good as Max or that he's scared of teaming with Max. I don't see that at all. I no. think it's just a measured response from a guy who likes being on the top at a competitive team instead of trying to go to Red Bull um, where Max has been their main man for, what, eight, nine, ten years no now? Notoriously his yes. man. You know, like yeah. the whole team, like in a way that like, 
Ferrari wasn't wrapped around Michael Schumacher, right? Like, yeah. notoriously, Red Bull is wrapped around Max Verstappen. Absolutely, and has been for going on a decade. Yeah. And it just so happens, though, that he's at his absolute peak, right? Right. So knocking his feet off the desk would be very, very hard. Yeah. You know, he'd have a better chance, I think, in knocking Lewis's or Charles's feet off the desk than Max's at this right. point. In my mind... Going into a team when a world champ is at the top is a hard ask, such as Valtteri yes. proved or ba uh, Barrichello proved or yes. Weber proved, right? Right. Um, that's difficult to do when the team is 100% behind the top driver and the top driver is on top of his game. That's a tough, tough deal. Going to a team when performance from the champ may be waning a little bit is a better chance, I think, of Kimi or Vettel at Ferrari. Right. Right. Um, you've got a better chance of going in there and putting your foot on the neck of the team when it's that sort of situation. I agree with Lando and I think McLaren is a good move, but ultimately long run, perhaps Mercedes would even be a better move given the big, big changes coming in 2026. And there again, that's down to his driver management team to ensure that he would be available post-2026 for Mercedes if they're interested, right? Yep. That would be the... Now, having said that, if I had to pick one driver, and I'm curious what you think, Grace, if you had to pick one driver from Max's generation, I'm not talking about Alonzo or Lewis. Right. They're the older generation. I'm talking about Max's generation. If you had to pick one driver from Max's generation that actually you think could pair well with Max at Red Bull, who do you think it would be? I kind of feel like it, it probably would be Lando, given his personality and he gets along so well with Max. But what do you think? George, Carlos, Alex, Pierre? I wonder what it would be like for Alex the second time around. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Now that Alex has got the bit between his teeth, wow. right? You know, and I think he's, you know, I mean, people ask him. I mean, I think that's always the other thing with these quotes when they come up, like, Somebody asked him the question. It's always posed like he was just like, oh, all these journalists are here. I'm going to talk about Red Bull and Max Verstappen. No, somebody asked him a question and he answered the question, but the question that was asked didn't get included in the article. So it just sounds like this weird opining on like Max and Red Bull. Somebody asked him the question, but somebody asked this of Alex a lot. Like, what have you learned? How have you developed at Williams? What would it be like at Red Bull? I think that's what I would want to see. I don't know that directly answers your question of who would be the best match, but I think that's what I'd want to see. I'd want to see Alex and Max together. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good shout. I like that combination too. But I think I'm because it I would think, be a totally different Alex coming back. Yes, in a way that I don't think Pierre Gasly would be. I don't know that. I don't know that he rises to that level in the way that Alex does. Um, I to think go back Pierre to Red Bull. would get confrontational. I think. Oh, well, that might be. A Look different at, kind of fun. Well, it might be. Um, yeah, I think Alex would be good. I think Lando. I think George would go hammer and tongs with it. Just his personality strikes me as that. Yeah. Um, so, He's yeah. The, no bars. So, yeah. But I think the other thing, too, is I think we have to keep in mind, you know, right? It's it's almost the Super Bowl. And, you know, the, the saying is always, you know, wins isn't a quarterback stat. I think it's the same thing in racing, and especially yeah. in Formula One, right? Wins aren't a Formula One driver stat. It takes so much to win a race. It takes so much, so many people, the rules to be a certain way. Like, you know, is is Lando a great driver who never, who to this date hasn't won a race? Yes. And yeah. is that common? Yes. And um, right. you just have that kind of dominance in Formula One. So I don't, I don't think you can ever use race wins as a, like, Lando's not as good as Max because he hasn't won as many races. You have to like dig in those analytics a little deeper and think about where the teams are. And much like with like Braun GP, they won, but I always joke that there's an asterisk next to Jen Button's World Championship because of where the other teams were at that same time. Would Braun have won in other situations? Probably not. But yeah, right. I mean, he still has it, and you know, I, nobody's taking that away from him. But we watched it. We were there, and you know. It's not quite the same if it was a, a season in either direction. Oh, hey, that reminds me. Uh, on Twitter, hold on, hold on. I'll pull it up. Okay. I'll pull it up so I get the name right. Dave. All right, Dave. Dave on Twitter. 
was asking me where <laughs> just the I, one Dave. Yeah, just Dave. You know, okay. it's all it's all night, all Dave. Okay. Um, Dave on Twitter yeah. was asking me um, about my comment about uh, Haas's boss Komatsu being oh. involved in the F F Tech mm -hmm. design with Renault, and he was saying that was McLaren's, not Renault's. Um, and I said, yeah, but. You know, he worked on Renault's, and and so he was just asking me to clarify. So if it was confusing for Dave, maybe I was confusing to the world. So the point was, and and I reminded Dave that McLaren wasn't the only one with the F Duck. Yes, they innovated the F Duck, but the other teams copied that, and the other teams even modified versions of their own F Duck. And Kamasu, I think, if memory serves correctly may have been on that side of Renault helping develop that or modifying or whatever it was. But I think that's where his role uh, was or, or some of the things that he did when he was at Renault. Um, and so, you know, they all had the F duct and then it was banned. Yes. Right. Um, and that begat the, the gold plated, everyone loves it DTS thing. Um that god awful thing. So anyway, that's uh, yeah. Just to, just oh. to clarify there. Sorry about no, that's that. That's a Dave. good. No, nope, good idea. I, I think. Was being ambiguous. You know, if only you fixed things in post, we wouldn't have these problems. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was? I was being duplicitous, Grace. Oh, way to go! Two weeks Thanks. later, duplicitous. Nice job. Yeah. The old the old memory going there. No, yeah. you know I I was thinking that you know. With Komatsu coming from Reno and now at Haas, like first of all, that's a book I want to read. Second of all, no wonder he survived at Haas for so long. Like, yeah, he was at Reno. He's kind of you know, yeah, he knows what he's getting into here. Right. So yeah, that team's been through a few things. Just just a couple, just a couple. So you know, I mean, maybe that that speaks to why he is still st at Haas and has taken on this new role at Haas, and maybe that's why. He's 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 got thick skin or something, right? Like he's he's yeah. been through the ringer a couple times. He's he's okay, fine. You know, if I was a bubbly young millennial uh, 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 aspiring writer who was trying to really get into F one and and do all that, writing a book about Renault's path through Formula One would be a good read. I'm just throwing that out there for some young, bubbly, effervescent millennial that has gotten into Formula One and Driver Survive, and they kind of fancy themselves a writer. That would be a great, uh, a great read. So, there be a you good go. through line. I, I would be interested in that, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, you, you, you know, you're <laughs> young. It's going to take you a while to research that because it goes way back. It does, and and it gets really exciting uh, through Turbo Era, then into Crash Gate, and then into Lotus, and the comeback, and the and the Malaysian corrupt business thing, and that yeah, it's that's an interesting story, and then it gets back on the grid, and then Renault buys it, and they're gonna. You know, take a couple of years and get right back to the sharp end of the grid. They aren't. They throw the drivers out. They bring Ricardo in, chuck him out with the bathwater. Then they fire longtime Alan Permain, Otmar, that they just brought in a few months earlier. That, you know, it's just on and on and on. What a story that would be. This is like um, the hokey pokey, is what you made this sound like. <laughs> Hokey Pokey, the story of Reno in Formula One. I think you've written this book, but you're right. I think it would actually be yeah. volumes. I don't think this could yeah, just yeah, be one right. book, right? Like it would have to be several volumes. Like, yeah. you know, the Flavio yeah. years would be a whole, you know, whole volume, even though I think that was only like, you know, four the years Flavio or something. Years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. I think that would be, yeah, that would be. That the would Turbo be good years. Read. The Flavio years. <laughs> the Nelson PK years. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, all right. I'm just imagining that. So there you go. Uh, I, would, you, I was if, right there with you. I'd read it. I'd yeah. Try. And if you go out and you write that book and you make a bajillion dollars, I want 20%. It's my idea. At least. Yes, yeah, Stefano Domenicali, when you steal that idea like you steal every other idea off this podcast, I know. remember. I know. Cut us in. Hey, nice segue, Grace, to the next story. Thank you. We're going to be talking about Liberty Media. Liberty Media, you know those cats, the people that own Formula One. Yeah. Yep. I've heard of them. Yep. Greg Popcorn Fart Mafi. That's who we're talking about. They have about. a catchy jingle. <laughs> I saw an interview once with a lady who referred to them as 
by the insurance company and they were like and and I don't remember now who it was it was like uh, Liberty Media <laughs> Liberty is it Liberty Biberty yeah exactly right so that always stuck that I was like I never made that connection because I know them through Formula One and but I get it that if you were just like some journo just walking around and you had to interview this guy that's totally what was sticking in your brain yeah they Marketing. should like capitalize on Liberty Mutual and then have like Stefano and an, and an emu, you know, <laughs> like Liberty Mutual does, you know, emu and Doug. I would pay so much money to see that. That would be good. The Halloween race, here it comes. That would be good. But so yeah. Liberty yeah. Media, just a little media organization over there uh, worth billions. John Malone, the man at the helm. Mm-hmm. Um, Greg Moffat, the man at the helm of their Formula One investment. Stefano Domenicali, the the man uh, in charge of Formula One. So Liberty Media made the Forbes list of most valuable sports empires. Did you get that? Most valuable sports empires. Yeah. Liberty has made the list before. And the list is for individuals or entities that own several major U.S. sports franchises and European football clubs. Liberty was number one at $18.22 billion. That's billion with a B. Hmm. So they were number one. They were the most valuable sports empire at $18.22 billion. That's how big they were. Now, the Miami Grand Prix and Miami Dolphins owner, Stephen Ross, don't forget about him, Grace. Yes. He just tickled almost $7 billion. He's in at uh, 16th on the list. He's right around there. Okay. Uh, above him, though, is Fenway Sports Group. They own the Boston Red Sox, where you pack your cock, Grace. Um, they also own the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yay! Yay, Grace's team. And they also own Liverpool Football Club. Uh, and the no UK. Effect. Nah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the group's value also rose by a significant 25% to $12.95 billion. To put them in third place. And they also, you ask, why do I mention that? Because they also happen to be a little bit involved with Formula One. They're involved with Arctos Partners, which has a small investment in Aston Martin. There you go. See? See how that ties together? It all comes together. together. It's like Vanguard and BlackRock of F1 here. It all ties together. Um, So now, speaking of Aston Martin... You can't forget, and I know you won't, the Bamford family, Grace. You know, you and I were just having dinner with them the other day. Yeah, right? The Bamfords. You and I and the Bamfords, they're great friends of ours. You know, we're we're like this. Super tight. The Bamfords and I. You know, I sent them the Christmas card like I do every year. They're always inviting me over to watch football. I always have to tell them, no, I'm so busy with all these sports. 44 starts. What do you want from me? I don't have time to go out on your yacht, okay? I don't. All right? I'm a little I don't busy. I people to see me like that. <clears throat> no, I'm a little busy over here. So the Bamford family also made that list, and they own, are you ready for this, JCB. That's right, the big tractors they use in F1. That's who sponsors Aston Martin. So they're on the list. The big tractors. How do we not have... Uh, an unboxed video of Alonzo riding around on a big tractor. Wouldn't that be cool? Alonzo yes. on a JCB going around the track? Absolutely. Why don't we have that? Why don't we have tractor races with him and Lance? That would be great. It would be perfect. Missed opportunity, people. Totally missed opportunity. Um, so anyway, that is uh, good for Liberty. Good yeah. for F1 in general. Uh, that is a, uh, uh, that's a windfall profit from their perspective Yeah. on this series. Um, on one hand, you know, I got to thinking about it. I needed to go look something up that I wrote. And I was thinking, you know, on one hand, we've been creating content about Formula One for 17 years now, folks. Oh and while God. some of you out there may say, this dork's been blathering on about F1 far too long. 
The actual upside of me doing so is that I have my own library of content that I can search over 17 years about certain topics. Like you would say, oh, what about the, the J-dampers? Ah, I wrote about that. What about Crashgate? Well, I wrote about that back you're, in 08, You're on a little 09. Formula One Wikipedia over there. I am. And then I was thinking about Liberty Media, and I wrote several editorials about Liberty Media when they were interested in buying Formula One. And I did a little research, and if I can remember to do so, I'll put a link to my original article in this podcast post on our website uh, that you can go read. I'm happy to say that... I went back and looked at that article that I wrote about Liberty's interest in Formula One and buying F1 anyway, and I have to report that I was relatively spot on given their position on Forbes' list this week. So, um, yeah, it's all about content and content creation and not platforms. And the whole reason, if you go read that, I even quote John Malone and Greg Moffat in that article, but um, they were talking about the reasoning for doing so and, and moving away from... Uh, just connected to cable and platforms delivery service because that's what they used to be mm -hmm. and they were getting heavily into content creation because they felt that like isps like at&t and you know spectrum and charter and all that kind of stuff the that's a that's a, a limited growth opportunity and for them they were reading the tea leaves correctly thinking it was all about the content you know content is king and delivery platform is like whatever choose your Choose your one, and I think I even mentioned there with everything going to a la carte and platforms that you select Paramount yeah. Plus, Peacock, all that sort of stuff. They were right, you know. Of course they, of course they would be. I mean, this is their industry they're in. They're smart people. Um, but anyway, I'll post if I can if I can remember. I'll, I'll uh, post a link to it. You can go back and read it. But uh, anyway, good news. That's um, that's real money, Grace. Just, just a few shekels to run a together. A few shekels, yeah. Just a bit, yeah. So. Uh... Real coin. That's right. Right on. That's Paul Charlesley kind of money right there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm for sure. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Let's see. What else? Oh, yeah. Haas. Remember them? Yes. Oh, no. It all went wrong. Yeah. Yes. Good I'm, old I'm Haas. Sure. That was the exact phone call from Gene Haas. <laughs> it was. Uh, well, they're not the only entity under new management these days. You know, you, you can kick Haas around all you want, but they're not the only ones being managed oh. by somebody else these days. All right. No, sirree, not the only one. It's in there, Lewis. That's right, Lewis Hamilton. You know him. You love him. Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton, Lewis Hamilton. There's no stopping him. There's no stopping him, Grace. There's no stopping him. No stopping him. Lewis Hamilton. Uh, Lewis Hamilton has parted ways with his management company <laughs> called Copper, and its Canadian-born boss, Penny Thou. 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 I don't know He's how you pronounce it. switching to Craig Pollock, the other Canadian. Oh. So a little backstory for you new at Formula One. Craig Pollock was Jacques Villeneuve's manager who then went in with Jacques into BAR Honda F1, or BARF1 they call it, um, and Craig Pollock. Nobody calls it that but me. I <laughs> yeah, well, I do too because it's there, great. Because it's BARF1, great. yeah. BARF1. Um, it's brilliant. And so Craig Pollock was the, uh, Jacques' manager. Yes. And they met because Craig Pollock before that was a ski instructor. So, yeah, Lewis, Craig Pollock, I'm sure he's available. Yes. Well, it's he's not far off. Listen to this. Copper was his management team for 2021 mm -hmm. to 2023 and was focused on his Project 44 as well as pursuing ventures outside of okay. racing, such as his charity Mission 44 and other things, the Apple TV documentary and the movie with Brad Pitt. Uh -huh. All right. It's said that he's going to continue to work with Penny on the movie as you okay. would do you know you don't want to just go okay well hell i'm done with Penny. Yeah. you're out of here and, and give the middles right. to brad pitt probably not a good look right no nope. so you want to see that through so you're going to string penny along to get that project done right i would yeah. right i don't want to go in there and kick brad pitt in the growing you know on this deal right right so he's going to continue on that but he's he's returned to his friend Mark Hines, Mark spelled with that really edgy and sexy C instead of a K. Well, he wasn't there when this was decided, so. That's right. Mark Hines from his F3 days, that's how long Lewis has known Mark. Hines 
is a former British touring car driver and the 1999 British Formula 3 champion. Hines struck up a friendship with Lewis Hamilton when Lewis was at Formula Renault and Formula Renault and F3. And they've been buddies ever since. In 2015, okay. Hines took a job focusing on building Project 44 for Lewis. That was set up by Hamilton the year earlier, as well as looking after Lewis's day-to-day -day activities at the races. That was back in 2015. Hines left Hamilton's employ at the start of 2021. He subsequently became Joe Guan Yu's management oh. team, working with his longtime associate and former Manor Marusha colleague, Graham Loudon, mm -hmm. who you all remember from Marusha days. The company that they own together, Equals Management, will continue to work with Joe, though. Okay. While Mark works with Lewis. So, Joe, um, I don't know how to break this to you, but um, I'm going to be working for Lewis Hamilton. Good luck. No, Joe. I'm not going to be able to make it to your party. I'm going to Lewis's. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry. Joe, you're, you're, oh, really? You're stuck in customs? Oh, oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll call you when I get to Lewis's house. I'll call you from there. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, Rihanna will be there. Yeah. 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 So there you go. Lewis. He's downsizing. He's getting away from that big corporate conglomerate, those, you know, those, um, those kind of people. And he's going back to Mark Hines, just old school, 2021. What? Probably would have been good to have Mark Hines around back in 2021. I'm just saying. I don't know. I just you think know? who knew picking your number would have to be so like, like Mission 44. And Project, Project 44. 44. Like it sounds good. Like what if it had been like, like Mission 73 doesn't have the same ring to it, you know? Pick your yeah. numbers carefully, kids. Yeah, they may become your charity. You never know. You, you never, never know, know where those numbers may take you. You never Choose know. Choose wisely. That's right. You could end up with, you know, mission whatever your number is. Yeah. You know, and if you didn't have a cool number, you'd probably end up with mission winnow. Yeah, nobody knows. It's a mystery. Nobody knows. At least mission 44, we know what they do. We have no idea whatever what mission winnow does. Nobody knows. Right, right. So that's uh, in, in the news. Uh, it's what interesting. Else? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of Good an luck, interesting Joe. move. You know, because he just inked that extension. That would have been under. That would have been under Penny. I thought you were going to say that Joe was calling from between two barriers at Silverstone. I I didn't know <laughs> where you were going to go with that. So, oh, you're stuck. You're stuck <laughs> in the barriers. I'm falling and I can't <laughs> get up. I, I can't yes. help you right now. I'm I'm going to Lewis's yacht. I will yes. see you later. Yeah, I'll call you from Lewis's plane. Yeah. Um, Good luck. Yeah. So interesting. I'm wondering because his contract it said in the article with Copper Penny Tho Thou ended in December 2023, but he got his contract extension before that. I'm thinking Penny got a big payday on that contract deal. Well, I'm sure. And now he's over with Mark Hines, and who knows if he'll want to get in it. Uh, you know what? Kudos to Mark for taking on a guy who could be on his last F1 contract, right. knowing he's not going to get the upside of the big $40 million a year contract on the backside. Penny got all that money. We don't, you know, we don't know what Joe paid him. That's true. Joe could be paying big money. You know, maybe Joe's state-sponsored. Who knows? Right. And so now he's like, oh, I can Don't do some charity work and work with Lewis Hamilton. Right. Maybe maybe my time in Formula One is really wearing on me. And I'd like to walk if, walk off in the sunset with Lewis on his other projects. Right. Could be. Could be. Know. There you go. Oh, boy. Here's other big yeah. news this week. This is uh, this is fun. Do you remember that plucky upstart team with the big brother team Red Bull that was called Toro Rosso? Yes. Well, that team back in, what, 2020 changed to Alpha Tauri. Alpha Tauri, by, led by Franz Toast, uh, led that team, Alpha Tauri, the premium fashion brand of Red Bull's brand. Uh, that team 
is now under new management as well. It's not just Haas. Oh, no, it all went wrong. Uh, it's uh, under new management now, and it's got a brand new name, Grace. Are you ready for the new name? Here it is. I can't wait to see her just gentlemen. roll right off your tongue. It just rolls right off your tongue. The new name, Alpha Tauri, oh, is the catchy name is this. Visa Cash App Red Bull Formula One team. Huh? Yeah. Visa Cash App RB Formula One team. Yeah. You know I'm going to end up just calling that V-Carb for short. I like, I like V-Carb. V-Carb we, makes more sense to me for some reason. We thought the logo looked like Arby's logo. It and so, did. And so then it was like we called them Arby's for a while. And then I was like, I'm just going to call them Toro Rosa. Like, I'm never going to be able to remember Visa Cash App, Red Bull, Formula One. Like, that is – like, I have a hard Visa enough time all these years later still just not calling them McLaren Mercedes, right? Like – yeah, I mean, they are technically McLaren Vodafone, Mercedes, Vodafone right? Like, McLaren Mercedes. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm never gonna get, you know, Visa Cash App Red Bull Formula One. So then I was like, I'm just gonna call him Toro Rosso. I'm just gonna call him Minardi. Like, it's like so. Patronus AMG Mercedes or AMG Patronus Mercedes. Right, that's always a joke. The Lewis never gets them in the right order, right? And so yeah. I think I'm gonna call him Minarbi. Minarbi. Because their Minardi and Arby's together would be Minarbi. So <laughs> we have the meat. That's right. That was always, you know, like, uh, okay, Minarbi, uh, because that at least is catchy, and I'll remember that, unlike Visa Cash App Red Bull Formula One team. Have you had yourself some Arby's lately? Yeah, I like some Arby's. Do you? Yeah. A beef and cheddar is pretty good. Really? Yeah. You don't eat Arby's? Okay. No, hell no. No. <laughs> I had Arby's. <laughs> hell no. Keep in mind, I'm from Kansas City, so I'm a barbecue snob. So what's roast beef? It's not barbecue. Yeah, no. I I I went there and got a roast beef sandwich. I, I then I admitted this is about six years ago, seven All years right. ago. I haven't eaten there since. But I went to Arby's and I got this. It was like these flat little buns, and their sauce was terrible. And honest to God, Grace, it was like steakums. They made the the, the inside of the sandwich is like well, thin little steakums. It was I terrible. Do love I do love steakums. So do you like steakums? Well, maybe oh, that's yeah. good for you. See, for me, you know, I, as a barbecue that's... snob from Kansas City, it was like, oh, hell no. This is not. No. no. Again, it's not barbecue. It's roast beef. I don't. Uh, but yeah. Arby's, Arby's, that's like saying I wanted a hamburger and then went to McDonald's. And I was disappointed. Right. It, you got to manage your expectations. It is yeah. fast food roast beef here, buddy. Right. Yeah, like, I know. I know. And I don't put I don't put any of their sauce on it. I go home and put my own horseradish on it because their horsey sauce is just mayonnaise, basically. Right. Yeah. So. But I can yeah. go to Jersey Mike's and get a better roast beef than that. Yeah, I know. But, you know, again, like McDonald's, it's because it is a distinct um, place in my childhood heart. And people always say, oh, McDonald's, they got the McRib coming back. Have you no, had the McRib? No, that's disgusting. Like, Nobody should oh, eat that. hell to the no. Who eats no. a McRib? That, Who eats a McRib? Look no, don't do that. Do you, you want to live? We want to hear in, in the comments. We would like to hear if you are a McRib eater. I don't. I don't. I don't yeah. mm -mm. Mm -mm. It doesn't even look right. And I'm going to tell you right now, they ruined the Shamrock Shake. That is not the Shamrock Shake of my youth. No, that is 100% true. That, that thing is, is a hot dumpster ab fire mess now. It is an abomination. It I is agree an with you abomination. 100%. Yeah. Yes. Don't kids, don't go get that Shamrock Shake March seventeenth or whatever. Because no. that, that thing okay. is like that is like I don't know. It's like sweet swallowing like cold stuff with pure mint extract or something. It is terrible. That thing was never meant. It wasn't meant when I was a kid. It was no. just green. Okay. So back in my youth, back in high school. When you when we is, were Utes? When we were Utes, living in our yurts. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I'm in the drive in drive through lane because all my mom wants is a shamrock shake, right? And it is St. Patrick's Day, so well right, this yeah, sounds okay. fine. We'll go get yeah. mom, you wanna get some shamrock shakes? Let's do it. Yeah. We'll go through lane. I know the your lady, maiden name, that can pour. <laughs> the lady goes, We don't have any. Well, it, <laughs> What do you mean at St. Patrick's Day you don't have any? Well, the calendar, it, they only have a certain shake for 30 days or whatever, 28 days. So it doesn't line up with St. Patrick's Day. What? What? I, I have never seen my mother as, as sad 
as that moment going through the drive through because oh, now we're like in the drive through committed and the lady's like do you want anything else and my mom's like no, no. <laughs> what else is there to life like the saddest moment that involved like human dying right like i mean the saddest like you know uh, gosh that's it, terrible it was terrible and she's like but it's saint patrick's day and then she's like I know, and I'm sure we were like the 800th person, right, that's come through the I'm line sure. to get the shamrock check, but she's like, right, the calendar, you know, the shakes are on the calendar for 28 days, and so it doesn't always line up with St. Patrick's Day. So just what be warned. What kind of Stygian hell is that? I don't know. I don't know. That I don't is know. so weird. Maybe they rectified it. I mean, when was the last time I went for a shamrock shake, but... I don't know. I, don't I was. Know. I thought you were heading down the road because if I go to McDonald's at seven thirty or eight o'clock again, and they tell me the ice cream maker's broke, I'm. <laughs> it's go always broke. Nuclear. I don't think they work. Whatever. Yeah. It, it, don't give me that. It's it's a pain in the butt to clean, and you tore them down at six thirty. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Just stop I, it. I also had a friend who worked at Dairy Queen, and yep. so he would, you know, so you'd always go and you'd get stuff, and he'd be, you know, like. You'd give him money, and he would just make you change and give you money back, but it was the same amount of money, but it looked like there was a transaction, right? And because uh, Dairy Queens doesn't do inventory. I don't know if they've caught on to that. But so there's no <laughs> accounting for how much ice cream you sold versus what you You know, you could never square yeah. up your cash register, right? So you'd give him a 20, and he'd give you, you know, a whole bunch of whatever change. As long as you didn't order the banana split because he hated making them. And, uh, oh, Buster, funny. What is it, the Buster Parfait? He's like, I yeah, refuse. If you come parfait. here and you give me a 20, I'm taking the whole 20. Money and making you that Buster Parfait because those things are terrible. <laughs> so maybe this is indicative of where I live. But you know, I, you know, Dairy Queen has those ice cream cakes, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now I like those ice cream cakes. Yeah. I, I will admit, okay. And my yeah. girls growing up always loved them, so yeah. they always wanted that for the birthday, right? right? So you can go up and they'll, you know, put a slogan on it or whatever, yeah, right. you know, say "Better luck next year, Lewis" or whatever you want, right? <laughs> And, sorry, uh, you're, sorry you lost your manager, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Best wishes, Gunther. Uh, thanks for everything, Gunther. Uh, so anyway, um, this Dairy Queen over by our house, it didn't matter whatever holiday it was, they would put on the marquee, be sure you know, to get your Halloween ice cream cake. Right. Be sure to get your birthday ice cream cake for the one you love. Be sure to get your Christmas ice cream cake. What? Be sure to get your 4th of July ice cream cake. And then it was like, be sure to get your divorce, celebrating your divorce ice cream cake. Be sure to get your, you know, stillborn ice ice cream cake. I mean, it was like for everything. Yeah. It was crazy. (laughs) Man, you talk about. Trying to push hustle those. some ice cream cakes. They had to compete with Carvel, man. They got. <laughs> I don't know. We we. Uh, I think the only reason Flip ever has it people over for his birthday is so that he can have a Baskin Robbins ice cream cake. So ah, okay, yeah. He loves an ice cream cake. Well, you like, know, a man's got to have a mission. I know, yeah. but what? Are, we're just two people. What are we going to do with the whole ice cream cake? I'm like, we're going to have that people over. Yeah, what else are I've we going to do? I've got faith in Flip. I think, given time. He, oh, he'll wrestle it to the ground. I was going to say, that's not a challenge. I'm sure that we could eat a whole <laughs> ice cream cake. I guess I should rephrase that. Yeah, okay. We could, <laughs> right. but we perhaps should not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, well, perhaps... yeah, yeah, that could be argued. I was just, I, I just had You're right. You. We, yeah. we probably, you're right. Yeah. If, if push came to shove, we would eat the whole thing. Right. That's so, the problem. You've got VCARB back here uh, yeah. in the new Visa Cash app. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. And get this, Grace, good news. Hold on, let me get some, uh, uh, do I have some applause? Yeah. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to tell you that longtime Renault employee Alan Permain has been hired by Visa Cash App Red Bull Formula One team, VCARB. So Alan Permain has now found himself a home at VCARB. Along with, you'll know that last year it was announced that Laurent Mecki was just leaving Ferrari, right. and he's the new Franz Toast, so he's the new team boss. And you remember just before the, you know, a little bit before the end of the year, Tim Goss announced he was leaving the FI, FIA, right. you know, just out of nowhere. And I was like, whoa, Tim Goss is leaving the FIA. Yep. He's over at VCARB as well. So lots of things going on over at uh, Red Bull's sister team. Watch this space. Uh, I got to be honest with you. Almost all of the social media I saw on this new name 
was ratioed to hell. They, it was I don't think it's good. the name they're going to stick with. Yeah, it was not good. They're gonna they're gonna unveil the unveil the car and be like, just kidding. <laughs> That's not our I name. Don't know if they don't. Visa Red Bull, Visa Cash App, Red Bull. I don't know. Just be. <laughs> Is it Visa Cash Cow? Visa, just be Visa. Visa Cash Cow, Red Bull. Because that's the way Zach views it. It's basically a cash yeah, cow a cash for Red cow. Bull. You know, yes. they get a second, uh, you know, uh, uh, cost cap to work with it. Yeah. Because the cash cow, maybe that's that's a country name too. Cash cow. I may call him cash cow. Although V-carb is quick, easy. I like V-carb. I think that's... Yeah. I did also like just calling them Minardi. That's, I don't know what they are anymore. <laughs> We're just going to go back to the start. Go back, back to the, to the start. Tour Russo. That's it. Yeah. Uh, hey, you found an interesting article over at The Athletic. You and or significant other did, uh, Flip did, uh, my, over there. My uh, research staff slash team principal slash husband. Yeah, yes. yeah. And I'm going to let you present it because it's about one of your favorite all-time drivers. Oh, I know the love. Anyway, long story short, Michael Andretti, with a lot of help from uh, General Motors, is working on a car. So Has a scale model car. Yeah, has a wind tunnel. Right. This isn't yeah. this isn't Peter Windsor, right? Like he has a car, not yeah. just a no cone nose cone and a, and a toaster. Right. Like a whole car in a wind tunnel in a factory yep. and uh they're building stuff and they got lots of people helping them. And I yeah. I mean I get it that like for General Motors it's probably not a lot of their people, but those people were doing something. So even if you even if you have a hundred employees and you say okay ten of you are going to go help out Andretti well those ten people were doing something you weren't you know employee hoarding they were probably so. making reliable cars over at GM and now look what happened right and now they're over helping Andretti so yeah go give it it was a very interesting read at the Athletic that I thought oh and I think it's interesting because to me you know maybe I'd buy the Michael Andretti if he had the funds would do this even though technically he hasn't been allowed into the sport yet. But he had to convince General Motors to do it too. So to yeah, me, that right. also leads that like, well, this isn't that that eleventh entry isn't that far off, right? Like somebody's promised him something that he's been able to carry to General Motors, that this is really going to happen in twenty six. So, um, yeah, you know, in total wonders. Well, what's he going to bring to the game? Well, he just went and convinced General Motors to build a car yeah. without a, a, an okay from the, the F one people. Yeah. Yeah. Not a, so, well, he's a good salesperson, if anything else. Well, yeah, but I just think there's a lot, a lot of people that have gone there, and yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, Ben Sillingham must be uh, greasing the wheels there because Andretti certainly is uh, moving forward as if he's going to be in the sport in 26. Isn't he just? I applaud it. I think it's great. I do too. I mean, I don't like Michael Andretti. I think that's well established, but I do like this. <laughs> like I like that you're I do love sticking a dagger in somebody like this is great that you're just like oh it's all right we're just gonna keep working because you're gonna let us in anyway right right yeah we're gonna get uh, in anyway it doesn't really yeah. matter yeah right? they don't have final approval but you know every and I just like that like every hoop they throw at them they're like all right you want us to fill out an 800 page application <laughs> here it is here it is you want proof of concept here it is. You want backing? Here it is. Like, how many right. hoops are they going to make them jump through before they just go, fine? You we'll want firstborn? Here's Marco. There yeah. You go. So there you go. Um, all right. Let's get in to some Albin's Cats. Oh, no, no, it wrong. <laughs> all right. Love that sound I'm dying bite. here. I don't know I'm why that's play so it to funny. Death. Everybody goes, oh, your sound bites are getting old. Stop playing them to death. Listen, people, we do this for our own amusement. We do. That clip is hilarious. We totally do. It, it, we do all of this. Yes, I can hear you, Clem Fandango. For our own amusement. See, I it's think right. I find that hilarious, but it's in context, right? It is in context. Okay. I also, you know, it's also it's the Jensen button. I don't know. Right. Why don't you tell me? Favorite yeah, classic. Yeah, that's one so, of my all time favorites, too. It's great stuff. So, Albans Cats, what do you got for us, Grace? Okay, so uh, shout out to our friends over at The Race. Um, and they do a podcast. They do Did Moto you get G Mitchell mommed? No, because it was their MotoGP podcast. Oh, okay. He doesn't do their MotoGP podcast. Yeah. It would be Simon and Val. Got it. And Matt. So, anyway, so 
they are doing the bike launches just like the car launches, right? They haven't really started mm-hmm. here in Formula One yet, but they've already started in MotoGP. So Ducati had their three bike launches, you know, right next to each yeah. other in Italy. And so I'm just like listening and, you know, okay, this is interesting because now, especially with all the aero, they have the same problems that Formula One does is that like the car you see now is not the car you're going to see at testing and it's not the car you're going to see at race number one because all these things are going to change and nobody wants to tip their hand quite yet. So in many ways, the bike looks familiar because it's still last year's bike, right? So they're talking about, you know, Simon's talking about, Simon Patterson's talking about all these things he's doing at at, uh, Original Recipe Ducati. And he mentions that it's because Pecco Bagnaia, growing up, was a big fan of Room. And was like, why don't we do that anymore? <laughs> and I was so excited that, oh, like, awesome. we talk about Room, what is now like a 10-year-old event. We talk yeah. about that all the time because back in the day when you only had 14 races, the off-season was so long. And you were just like, please be Room, please be Room. Because at least we'll get some pictures and yeah. we can mock Bernie Eccleston on a sled. Yeah. And, you know, we'd have something, some content to talk about. And so I was so excited that Peko Banyaya convinced Ducati to have a room like event for them again just because that's what he expected and that's what when he thinks of Ducati that's what he thinks of his events from his childhood so I was just like super excited that when I like I was in the car listening when I got home and I was like and and Flip had listened to it and had not mentioned that and he was like oh you're right I forgot Vroom I was like how could you forget something like that so yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it maybe Pecco Benyai isn't any everybody's like cup of tea when it comes to world champions but the guy can wrap a Christmas present and he brought back the closest thing to Vroom that we've seen in what like, ten awesome. years so. Shout That's out to awesome. Pekka Benyaya. Good job. See, Ferrari and Ducati used to do that, you know. Yeah, and together. Yeah. Together. And so Ferrari next year should jump on board. I think so. And then yeah. go back to the ski. I mean, they went to some random ski slopes in the Alps, just like yep. the old days. And yep. I just was like, you know, this is. Also, did you know that Audi owned Ducati? Uh, yes, I did know that. I feel like yes. I was the only. I did not. I may have known that somewhere in the recesses of my brain. But anyway, because yeah. that was one of the things that they got to do was like drive around Audis on ice tracks because yeah, yeah. Audi owns Ducati. And I'm like, well, maybe, you know, in 26, maybe we'll have Audi and Ducati do a room and it'll be a Formula One. And yeah. instead of being the Italian Ferrari Ducati thing. Right. right. It could be Audi and Ducati. That would make even more sense. So get on that, Seidel. I like we it. We'd like to see that happen. I like it. It's good. It's good. All right. It's good. Uh, let's see. Are you? Do you want a couple of no shit headlines that I found? Uh, Always. Okay. Always. This this first one, axed Red Bull prodigy hits out at unfair helmet Marco ahead of switch to F1 rivals. Goodbye, good luck, and good riddance. That's basically what Jack Crawford said. He said that he was just brutally blunt, to the point of just being offensive at times. But he appreciated it. He was just so blunt and straightforward. Uh, but he said it got pretty rough uh, at times. Now, the rumor is is that he could be joining Aston Martin's uh, Young Driver program. We'll see. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that was young Jack Crawford with that quote. Right. I mean, because uh, really that could have been like half the grid. It, it could have. Of current Formula One drivers, let alone anybody that's a reserve driver or in the a academies, quarter, right? A quarter of the current Formula One drivers came through... A Red Bull program. I mean, would a you quarter. be surprised if that was Pierre Gasly that said that or no. Alex? No. no. It could be anybody. No. And I'm not talking about Al- Jaime Algeshwari or, or Buemi or, or oh. Antonio Liuzzi or any of those guys. Today's oh, yeah. grid, a quarter of them all came through Red Bull's program. That's right. Uh, let's see. And the last one is, quote, my dad is an F1 legend. Now I'm the sport's most famous wag modeling for Vogue and selling my own makeup range. Now, this is, is one this thing like a- that the British tabloids do that that you just don't see over here in the States. They write headlines like this where they're it, – it, sounds like it's like the actual person they're talking about is what they said, but it's not what they said. It's a caricature headline of them. It feels like, isn't this like a game from the eighties or something? Like <laughs> my dad is an F1 legend and I, right. I don't even know what a wag is. I'm uh, the most famous oh, wag. Wives and girlfriends. Oh, uh, it does. You. My dad wives is an F1 legend. 
Now I'm the sport's most famous wag modeling for Vogue and selling my own makeup. Uh, what is I? Kelly PK? What is Kelly PK? Yes, Kelly PK. Mm. Yes. So there you go. I, you know, to me, I don't know, maybe that's totally acceptable in the UK. To me, I would be offensive because the whole my dad is an F1 legend. Now I'm the sports. That's first person, right? Yeah. And it, it makes it sound like this is a quote from Kelly. It makes it sound like it's a quote from Kelly. And, of course, it wasn't a quote from her. And it makes it sound like it was. And if I was them, I'd have the lawyer, you know, retract that headline because that's, I don't know, I don't see how they get away with that. And is she the most famous wag? I don't think that's true. But. I think maybe she probably estimated makes the most per social media post that she does. Like 2,500 pounds per post that she does. I think that's the chart that they had. I don't know. No. Yeah, honestly, I don't follow any of that. I mean, I know who no. some of the drivers' girlfriends are. I'm going to go back to some other Well, wives, I, mean, I mean, if they're, um, you know, like I know like Alex and Lily because they do posts together and she's an athlete normally. Yeah, right? yeah, like her. Yeah. Um, yeah. So sometimes you know who they are, but it's because they also have a presence. But yeah. I don't know. You know, like I only knew who Charles, the Charles Leclerc was dating Charlotte because he locked her outside. Like that was such a funny story that I yeah, right. I could relate to, right? Like, right. but they're broken up now. So, but yeah. I have no idea. It's only because of that story that I even know what her name is. Who knows? Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, Kelly's did, Max's girlfriend. I did once, not that long ago, learn that uh, Max Biaggi from Formula One, Formula One from MotoGP, dated Naomi Campbell. I was just like. Oh. Well, there's an insight to some relationship I would like somebody to write a book about. How about I'm that? Like, hmm, I hadn't known. Well, that's interesting. I don't know. I, I, again, random factoids that you find out out in the world. I just don't follow. It's not that I don't care or that it's not. I'm being. It's just I don't really follow. I know there's a photographer that. You know, takes a lot of pictures of the women of F1 or whatever, and you know they're all great pics and stuff. It just, I don't flip through all those looking at all the girlfriends and stuff. It's just not, I don't know. That's kind of their life. I I, I don't really have an interest in that. Um, it's just not a thing that appeals to me, and hasn't for years. You know, all the the remember the Jordan girls with the butt floss and the you know all that stuff. I, Oh, it's just, you know, I go to the races in Austin or whatever, and you see all the grid girls and stuff, and it, it, I don't know, I guess my head is just there and so into the racing of it that I'm not really focusing on anything else, like girlfriends and stuff. I don't know. I'm more interested in seeing the car and the brake ducks than I am see who's dating who, but that's just me. What do I know, Grace? I don't know. I really have no idea what you know. I don't really know what I know, but I mean, clearly, I don't even know what a wag is. So, what do I know? but I do see the the social media posts, and some of those are fun. Like you said, I saw. Um, I don't know her name, but um, uh, the Swede. You know, he. Got, I think he got married. I think he did. Um, Scott Dixon's wife was a hoot. Um, there's a few of them out there that have a lot of fun, funny social media stuff, and. You know, having a have a good time with the driver or whatever, and it's a part of their life. And I get it; it's a part of the driver's life that you get to see via their girlfriend or their wife or whatever, and that you don't normally get to see. And you know, who doesn't like to you know peek into Fernando's life or vacation? Well, That's fun. Well, or it. even like in like uh, you know my not famous friends. I have a friend who he doesn't really post on social media at all, but his wife does all the time. So then it's funny because yeah. you'll be like, "Hey, Todd, I just saw your new kitchen," and we're we'll like, "Why do you know about my new kitchen?" <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Right, um, exactly. because your wife posted it, and I saw that, and it was funny, yeah, you know. Yeah. And he's like, ah, yeah. But you know, yeah. It's that like I enjoy. We, we wouldn't know anything about Kimi if it wasn't for his wife, right? No, right. Yeah, we so. used to only know him as hugging a dolphin in a gutter somewhere. Right. So, so I get it why you know people do follow uh, wives and girlfriends and stuff, and I, I I understand it's just not something I'm that interested in. All right, that does it for this podcast, Grace. What okay. time do we have? How long has this podcast been? Longer than you ever want it to be, really. It is. It is longer than I was shooting for. All right. Well, but we were having here, a good time. We? we were having a good time, damn it. <sighs> Take two commutes this week, people. That's right. 
We're having a we're having a great time on this podcast. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? Yes. All right. Hey, in the meantime, a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters because we could not and would not do it without you. Um, and thanks for uh, the new donations uh, over the holidays and uh, and this past week or two. Appreciate that. Uh, we couldn't do this and wouldn't do this podcast uh, without you. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, next week, I took a a, a, a couple. <laughs> yeah, uh, I took. I was a, trying to make it do the hard. But does it do the hard thing? It uh, does. But I anyway, um, go ahead. I took a week off from the uh, from the. Um, uh, I didn't send the link out, and I should have for the audience uh, side of this. And so my apologies. That's totally my bad. I know there's a few of you in the chat right now, which is great fun, and it's awesome. Uh, my apologies for not having uh, – um, I was trying to read my notes, and my apologies uh, to all of the folks in our chat right now. Uh, but I will go through and answer you guys. But anyway um, – it's great having our Patreon supporters because we send out a link that you can join these podcasts and watch live as we're going through. And uh, normally I try to, uh, you know, catch a few questions when they come in. And so I was uh, feverishly trying to keep my camera working and other things here. So apologies. I didn't see that. Um, my bad, folks. Next week, I promise I'll do better. Uh, so plan on joining next week. If you're a Patreon supporter, you can go to our Patreon page. You'll see a post there that has a link uh, that you can join as a guest to our podcast and uh, and watch live and interact with us live as we record. So uh, it's great fun. We love the questions, and we love having you part of the podcast as well. So huge thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you like the podcast, you can go to our, our website. Uh, you can go to iTunes. Give us a good rating over there or your favorite podcast player. You could tell a friend about it. You could share it, right? If you really like this podcast, you go to our website and you can buy merchandise like Grace is wearing, right? You could buy Park for May merch. Um, you could do that at our website. Uh, you could uh, go to our website, which is theparkformay.com. That would be great. Share your opinion on this podcast and others. If you like Arby's, let us know. And why? Um, I'm telling you, beef and cheddar, man. You don't know. Okay. Well, All day. I'll try, maybe I'll try it. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, not, well, that does it try. for this week. We will be back next week. Uh, I'll, I'll find Grace, and she'll be fresh off a, an Arby's beef and cheddar. And, uh, and we'll uh, find some more F1 news to talk about next week. Until that time, this is Todd, a.k.a. Negative Camera, saying so long, Grace. See you next week. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over.